In the last episode, I showed doing the leak down and the compression test after the cam break in. But I didn't, after I watched the episode, I didn't like it because I wasn't telling you enough about what I was doing. So I think we ought to give some more information here. On the compression test, the uh, factory service manual, of course, this is not a street hemi obviously where it's a 572 it's got more cam blah 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 but the the factory service manual says a minimum of 110 compression it doesn't tell you what it's supposed to be new because this is actually a service manual and not a, a what it was manual but they talk about 110 minimum and 40 pounds between all eight cylinders you want them within 40 pounds or that tells you that you know you've got some weak cylinders there but before uh, e-bodies.org you you go to that website you click on the resources tab and you can download a factory service manual for yourself and even though it doesn't apply on this so much you need the factory service manual for whatever you're working on and that's a great thing to have then you can have it on your phone you can print it out have one in the shop you can print it out and have one in the house that of course it's 1300 pages so you'll be doing a little printing but nonetheless you do need that okay so the compression test can be done with the valve cover on if need be there's a because the Hemi uses a plug tube and you might lose a little bit down there it it's a little better maybe if you had a stiff where you could tighten it up because of the plug tube situation on a Hemi whereas normally you're down here you know so this is pretty simple the only thing you need to know to do a compression test is the throttle has to be wide open so it can get the air to make the compression if it, if it can't get air it's not going to get much compression but throttle wide open and ignition disabled that's the only two things you need to know if you forget to disable the ignition and seven of the cylinders start uh, it's, it's going to get kind of scary you know what I mean so uh, most people uh, like to do these hot because you might get better numbers with uh, the piston expanded and fresh oil all over everything. And that's how we did it last time was uh, hot. But uh, we'll do it this time cold, which is probably more normal when you go out there. If, if it's not going to give you a big gain, it's not going to be a big deal. You'll probably just get up and go out there to work on your car. And I wouldn't bother warming it up unless I had to do it all right let's crank it up we got the throttle wide open we got the ignition off we'll see where we're at yeah same as the other day 200 which is the same as when it was hot so we're all good So the compression test is pretty easy. Now we'll do the leak down. To do a leak down test, you bring the piston to top dead center on the cylinder you want to test. Check that your valves are, you're not in the overlap phase, so you're at top dead center for that cylinder. You have to take the wrench off of the harmonic balancer after you move the engine. Because if you don't have it right on top dead cylinder, on top dead center, when you hook the air up, that air pressure can push that engine down and then throw that wrench and slap you upside the head and you wouldn't like that. So, top dead center. Hook up your gauge. We're going to Test at 100, and then whatever we lose will be less than 100 here. So if we test and it says 
96, then you've got 4% leak down. And I'm having a problem with this O-ring, so we're not going to get really accurate readings, but we don't care. We're just kind of going through the procedure of doing the leak. It's leaking real bad there, but so we're looking there and we're seeing about 92, 3, and we got 100 here, 92 here, so we would call that 8% leak down. And part of this is just, you're just monitoring the health of the engine, so to speak. The leak down doesn't tell you as much as you would want, but it, but it can tell you something. It's a diagnostic tool. So if you have excessive leak down then you can leave it hooked up and you can listen into the carburetor and see if it's leaking through there to indicate an intake valve problem and you can listen into the headers to see if you hear an exhaust leak and then you can Listen in the breather, which would be blow by past the rings. But don't put too much in the leak down. It's not exactly like you're thinking. Uh, don't listen to those people that tell you that if you're leaking down 10%, that you're down 10% on horsepower. They don't have a clue. Uh, on my mountain motor, Sunny Motor, uh, Sunny Leonard's, instructions said 20% uh, leak down is okay and and when I leaked it once it had 20 and it ran just as good as it ever did so uh, don't put much faith in it just use it for what it's worth and it can help you so just bear that in mind Early in the build, a lot of people had questions in the comments about the weight difference between the cast iron blocks and the street hemi blocks, the mega blocks, the world products block, the KB block. Well, I don't have all the answers, but we can weigh a few of them today and get an idea. I bought a scale and I was curious myself. This particular block is four or five hundred bore hasn't been finished on. Uh, nowadays they're steel caps, you used to be able to get them either way, but so it's got some pretty heavy steel caps in there, they're larger than the original caps were. But this is going to give us a good idea, because other than that it's all finished, uh, no cam bearings yet, but those are minor weights. And so we've got the main caps on, bolts in, we'll find out where we're at. Wow, those main caps are heavy. 162 pounds. They're big, huge caps made out of steel. So I think I was thinking the previous weight, I thought they were around 140 with aluminum caps. And they may have been a little more than that. And I know they make the sleeves thicker now so people went, could go to four or 500 bore. So there's some weight there probably. But 162 pounds on a KB. So this is a Mopar Mega Block, 299 and a half pounds. But really, it's not that heavy. This, the bore is at 419 right now. So by the time you bore it out to 4500 or wherever you're gonna go, uh, this is a Siamese bore block. This is what I would call the second generation you know, the first ones that came out weren't available Siamese, and then, I don't, I don't think, and then they hadn't filled in that spot in front of the oil pump, you know, where they were later going to make that a oil entrance. But, and it does not have the uh, lifters board yet. So if we're at 299, and this is a Siamese bore, that's really not that bad because a stock street hemi I have is 250 pounds. So uh, by the time you bore this out, I don't know how much we're going to lose. You also have to do the, uh, there's going to be some push rod uh, clearance done here. So I don't know how much we're going to lose here, but I bet it's at least 10 pounds. Uh, 
so that's not bad really 290 uh, to get a Siamese boar and the heavier mains and everything over a stock street hemi at 250 so let me see how long these lifter boars are Lifter boards look like about 175. So, now, hopefully one of our good viewers will do the calculations for us, going from 419 board to 4500, and boarding out 16 lifters, 0.094 times inch and, a inch and three quarters, and he'll tell us the... Uh, weight reduction to get us down to what it's really going to be when it gets done. And uh, I'm really surprised. I thought this was going to be a lot worse than that. Uh, I still don't have a weight on the Callies because I did not have this scale when I got the new Callies block. Uh, hopefully I'll get another block in here sometime and we'll weigh that Callies block. And I'd like to get a weight on what the world block weighs for real. And uh, and I think we ought to do everything at four or five hundred except street hemis because they won't go there. But so we'll know where we're really at on the weight. So we got two fifty on the street hemi, two ninety nine on a Siamese bore mega block before it's bored out to four five hundred and before the lifters are done and before the push rod clearance is done. And then we got hundred and sixty two on the KB. But several people asked that uh, early on and and so I wanted to provide that information now that I can.